Today it's going to be all about the Denifreps Terminator 2. Now I've been using the original Terminator, the Terminator 1, uh, for about two years as my reference. Many DACs have passed through this room and yet <laughs> the original Terminator is still here and that says a lot about, well, <laughs> how good it sounds to be blunt about it, right? But anyway, so the Terminator 2 comes along and how is it different? Well, from the front, they look almost exactly the same. Uh, the rear does look different, there's different inputs, but basically the real guts are what changed and there's a new uh, new oscillator board. I'll put up the, the details of the difference between the one and the two right now, but the oscillators have changed, the uh, isolation has changed, the power supply has been improved, that sort of difference. So nothing monumental, but in fact they do sound different. The chassis, though, is solid aluminum. There's no folded metal parts here. It feels absolutely inert. Now, oh, the big deal, though, is the, is the guts. And the guts are the discrete resistor ladder DAC, meaning uh, Denifreps does not use DAC chips in their designs. They roll their own. And that's no, they're not the only company that does that, but in terms of at this price range and at this level of uh, quality, it's, it is kind of unusual, it is. Let's take a peek under the hood and you will see Denifrep's discrete resistor ladder DAC. There's over a thousand precision resistors used in those four banks because this is a fully balanced from input to output DAC. So round back, you'll note that there are balanced XLR and RCA analog outputs. And Denifreps recommends against using both of those at the same time. Now, I've, I've done it. it. Nothing awful happens. It's just it does sound slightly better if you use one output or the other. The other noteworthy thing about that rear panel is it has three, count them, three I squared S inputs. Now, I, don't, I can't think of any others that do that. And the thing is, the reason they're doing that is, other than bragging rights, is that you can configure the I squared S to work with your, let's say, transport. Because there's no standard format for the pin configuration on I squared S. So with the Denifreps Terminator 2, you can configure it to work with just about any, but not 100% of sources. That's pretty cool. Speaking of important, yes, there will be an audiophiliac viewer system of the day at the conclusion of today's show. Now, as for probably the most important number of all, I'm going to run down some numbers, and the number is $4,450 uh, in silver or black finishes. Now, that price includes free shipping worldwide, and at least in the U.S., no tax. Now, I'd have to point out that Denifreps is a Chinese company. The Terminator is made in China, but worldwide distribution occurs through Vinshine Audio, which is located in Singapore. Uh, they provide a three-year warranty. And uh, now understand that when you go to the Vinshine Audio website, wherever you are in the world, the prices listed are in Singapore dollars, and you have to convert to the local, your local currency. And then the shipping is free, and the tax situation obviously depends on where, you're, where you live. So is this a perfect DAC? Steve, it sounds like everything is glorious about it. What, what could possibly go wrong? Well, there's a few things I have to bring up. First, there's no MQA. If you're an MQA person, in other words, you listen to Tidal and you care about MQA, sorry, there's no MQA here. And the thing that bugged me more than the no MQA is there's no remote control. Not having a remote means that if you want to change inputs, well, you got to get off, off your couch or listening chair and go over and do that. If you want to invert phase, same deal, you got to get up and do it. Mess around with the filters, you got to get up and, and handle that the old-fashioned way by pressing buttons. And those buttons are very, very nice, I should point out. But anyway, it's a totally manual affair. And to make matters somewhat worse, there's no display. There's no LED or LCD display. So you got to get up and look at it. Now the labeling on the front panel is really, really tiny and virtually impossible to see in dim light and actually sometimes hard to see in bright light. And the LEDs are, real, are also really, really tiny, these little red LEDs, and they tend to be invisible most of the time to me. 
So uh, you got to, but you know, in day-to-day -day use, that's not an issue, but I'm just saying, damn, I wish it had a display. It would make life so much easier. As for the rest of the review system, I used a Pass Labs XP30 preamplifier, a Pass Labs XA25 power amplifier, Klipsch Cornwall 4 speakers. As for high res uh, listening, some of the time at least, I was using a Pass Labs HPA1 headphone amplifier, which is also a preamp, and Meze Imperian headphones. Those are open back planar magnetic headphones. Really, really good. I neglected them too long. And, and during this review, I fell back in love with the Meze Imperians. Really nice headphones. To start, I inserted the Terminator 2 into my system and just left it there. I didn't do comparisons with anything for quite some time. I just listened to it. And I can't say that when I went from Terminator 1 to Terminator 2 that the world changed or anything. No, it sounded, it sounded better, but I wasn't trying at that point to figure out how or why it was different. You know, It just stayed there for about six weeks of just being in the system. And that was a great way to get to, to know the piece. So then when I went back to the Terminator 1 and I left both of them on, they were both fully warmed up. When I went back to the Terminator 1, the differences were there. And the first recording I played was this Telarc. It's a Bach organ recording. Really, really good. Very, very audiophile, very airy and spacious. And that was the difference that the Terminator 2 brought to the party over the 1. It just opened up more. The organ went, maybe went down a little deeper, but really it was a spatial difference that one sounded spatially bigger than the other. The two sounded bigger than the one. Next up was Neil Young's Unplugged Session, which is really good. He was very into doing it that way. Uh, I think it's one of the best unplugged ever of that series. On, I guess it was MTV. But in any case, the recording quality is good. I wouldn't say it's great, but yeah, there was more of Neil coming through, his, his soul, his humanity came through a bit better on the two than the one. Not gigantic differences, the one is still really, really fantastic. That's how it managed to stay here for such a long time, for about two years it was in my system. So I can't say when I went back to the one, I was, oh my God, it's so awful. No, the one is still really, truly exceptional. For a bit better quality recording and higher res, I played the Buena Vista Social Club on Cobus, streaming that. Oh, with a Node 2 i by the way. And yeah, you know, it's a great recording. It's done in a Havana studio. The musicians are all phenomenal. And their humanity and their interplay, you could hear them listening to each other, that sort of thing. And it was oh, the big difference going to this recording compared to uh, Neil Young is it was more 3D. It had more space. It, it had more depth. There was more there there in 9624. And going back to the Terminator 1, less so. The same recording, the same of everything, but just like this, just smaller over the 1. To really hear what the Terminator can do, I needed the best recordings possible. And for that, I turned to the MA Recordings Audiophiliac Sampler, which is available for free directly below in the description box. And uh, yeah, so I played that music. Now, it's not popular music, it's world music, it's jazz. The chances are you haven't heard too many of these musicians before, but they're all really, really good. And the recording quality is phenomenal. It's a minimalist recording, meaning it was only recorded with two mics, two B and K microphones, no dynamic range compression, no equalization, no processing. What went down at the session is what you hear. Compared to a typical studio recording in jazz or pop or whatever, this is at a whole other level of realism, of being there. That's where I was using the Pass Labs HPA1 headphone amplifier and the Meze Imperian open back planar magnetic headphones. And you know what happens <laughs> with a really good recording like this? It just goes like that. It's not coming from here, it's coming from way out there. And that is so cool. And it is so effortless. It, it is about high transparency, but it is also about, it's, it sounds more like real life than it does like a recording. Possibly, well likely, because it isn't compressed and it isn't equalized and it isn't processed, which is pretty much everything else you hear 
sadly. It is a sad situation that it's come to this, but that's it. So even older recordings like The Beatles' Abbey Road from 1970, right? 1969. Um, that's in high res. It is on the Blu-ray uh, set that came out in 2019, except it's only 48, 24 when you send it out to a DAC, like this one, like Terminator 2. And you know what? Compared to the MA recordings, as much as I love the Beatles, the Beatles recording did sound very processed, very dynamically compressed, and just mess with. I mean, it's beautiful. I love the Beatles. I love that record. But compared to, I was going to say the real thing, compared to an unprocessed recording, it's a whole other ballgame that the unprocessed recording is, right? So my goal here was to really hear what the Terminator could do with the best possible source material, best possible recording. And what I heard was truly wonderful. And it was wonderful over the Terminator 1 but a bit, just a bit more of everything. So there you go. Which leads me to, well, logically enough, so Steve, what do you really think? Well, I think I just told you what I really think, but I'll sum it up this way. For the price, for the build quality you get for that money and the sound quality, I think the Terminator 2 is actually a deal. At least by audiophile standards, it is underpriced for what you get. And now, and now it is that special time for the Audiophiliac Viewer System of the Day. Hey, this one comes to us from Skip. He lives in Vietnam near Hanoi. And he got hooked on high-end in 1972 when he walked into a shop and heard Macintosh, Yamaha, ADS, and b and And he was in. Right now, Skip's running Prima Luna Evo 400 monoblock amps at Prima Luna Evo 400 preamp, EAT low S phono preamp, EAT C sharp turntable, Soundware S300 streamer that he's running off of a Mac Mini. CD Transport is a Jay's Audio CDT Mark III. DAC is by Denifreps, it's a Terminator. Speakers, yeah, the speakers are really nice. Those are Tannoy Turnberry GRs. Subs, he has two, and they're both REL S5 shows. Power conditioning is by Plixar. There's a back 3000 and a back, actually two of them, 400. Cables are by AudioQuest, Sound Affair, and Cardus. Thanks, Skip. We are back. My name is Steve Guttenberg, and I continue to be the audiophiliac. If you like what I'm doing here on the show, please give me likes. Very important to the YouTube algorithm and important to me by extension. But anyway, please give me a like and also subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, please join us. It's super easy to do. Hit that button yeah, over there somewhere and subscribe. And when you do, hit the notification bell so you'll be notified every time there's an amazing new episode. And you will be notified even when the episodes are not particularly amazing. They, you know, they're all pretty good though. What else? You could check out the Patreon, which can be found at p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash, say it together class, audiophiliac. What else? Well, oh, Patreon accepts payment, it's not free, payment in dollars, pounds, and euros. And now I can say my work here is at last complete. Thank you again for watching, and I really do Hope to see you back here again very, very soon. Bye-bye.